I come bearing tablets. Next, a free internet service for your iPod Touch, a GoPro camera, a Windows Phone shootout, a pair of tablets, and a precursor to Google Glass for skiers. Well, it's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter Before You Buy. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And to get a copy of Brandon Sanderson's Legion absolutely free, visit audible.com slash Sanderson. I feel like I feel like Moses here with my pair of tablets. Hello, welcome to Before You Buy, the Twit Review Show, where we get great products in house, and then we ask our entire staff to review them. We'll get to those tablets in just a moment. But first, a first-time visitor to the Before You Buy program, Mr. Dick DiPartolo. <laughs> The, the Gizwiz, Dick hosts our Gadget Review podcast, and there's a little bit of overlap, but often the Gizwiz reviews kind of less expensive, kind of silly gadgets. Yeah, but exactly. Sometimes uh, we review serious gadgets. In this case, this is something we sent to you because, A, it doesn't work here, and B, it requires an iPod Touch. What do you got? Uh, I have the Freedom Pop Rocket Sleeve. Now, if you have an iPod Touch uh, Generation 3 or 4, this can be a clever device. It adds a 4G hotspot. Now, you can either clamp it onto the back of your iPod Touch or it acts as a hotspot. So like here in Manhattan... I get hotspots all the time, but I think it's <laughs> it's just uh, that change That's a of totally life. totally different... I don't think Freedom Pop can help you, Okay, pal. all right. Gold, pond, uh, gold uh, bond Go powder. Yes, is what I've been using for. that, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so since it is a 4G hotspot, I, I found that in my apartment, I don't really get a great signal. It uses uh, the clear wire network. But since it's a hotspot, what I did was I put the uh, Freedom Pop sleeve in my window and then anywhere in my apartment using my iPod Touch, I can call out over line two, or use Google Voice or use Skype to make phone calls. Uh, outside where I do get a good signal, uh, video streaming is really great. You can see photos, download photos, send emails. Now in the ads, they, they, they say, you know, stream this, watch videos, free, 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 free. Well, it, it can be free. The sleeve itself is $99 and, and the good thing is you get free internet service, but it's 500 megabytes a month. Megabytes. Megabytes. That's not an awful okay. Lot. Yeah. yeah. And there's a way to earn more data by recommending friends. Each friend, I think you get another 10 megabytes of data. And then there's a way to watch ads and earn more data. But in general, if you have an iPod Touch and you don't have a smartphone and you want to stay in touch away from a Wi-Fi area and you are very stingy with the amount of data you use a month, you could get away with having 4G service in a 4G service location. As you said, you gave it to me because uh, I get service here in Manhattan. I think you guys in Petaluma... Uh, don't get well, it. Well, we it's interesting, and, and they have a coverage map that says where you can get this, where you can't. Mostly it's metro areas, and mostly it looks like the clear wire coverage map. That is, it's 4G WiMAX, which is an early version of 4G that Sprint used that I never liked. Um, oh, Sprint okay. is rolling out 4G LTE, and according to the Freedom Pops website, it does use LTE. But, in fact, we have 4G LTE from Sprint here, or it's coming anyway. Um, so I guess at some point we'll be able to use it. But that's a really important caveat. Check to see if it works where you are. Absolutely. And and the, uh, Freedom Pop says that next year they're moving over to Sprint. And as we know, 
Uh, it looks like Sprint is probably going to buy all of Clearwire shortly. So I don't know. Well, but <laughs> they're not buying it for the service because they've already decided they hate WiMAX. They're buying it for the, the spectrum. In fact, it's almost certain that if Sprint finishes this transaction and buys Clearwire, that Clearwire's WiMAX service will be gone, which means that your Freedom Pop will work with LTE or 3G only, not with the WiMAX system. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, for 99 bucks. It's interesting. It, it takes a fair amount of time to, to uh, get online. The, the downside of this is that you have to carry a different cable because your iPod charges with the 30-pin connector and the Freedom Pop charge, uh, charges with the micro USB. Uh, the little LEDs to tell you when you're online or signal strength in daylight, you're dead. You can't see them there. Really tiny. But in, in general, for 99 bucks, like if you're a college kid and you wish you had a smartphone and you already have an iPod Touch uh, generation three or four, this could really uh, help you keep in touch with people when you're away from Wi-Fi. So depending on where you live, it's definitely worth trying. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little time, skeptical. For a, limited, for a limited time only. Exactly, because it's unknown what's going to happen in the future. We don't know about data caps. Uh, we do know 500 megabytes is not a lot of data a month. But the price is right if you want to buy the unlimited or the 10 gigabyte plans. Yeah, and, yeah. and they sell, you know, you, you can get another, uh, I, I think it's like $10 for each gigabyte of service that you want if you go over the uh, limit. And the fact that it's a Wi Spot is kind of a Wi Fi hotspot. Up to eight devices can be on the network. But then, of course, you're really eating through data. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, yeah. so this is an interesting play. I'm not, I don't know. What do you think? Pros and cons. Uh, Pros. Let's see. Oh, get, get on the web, make calls when you're away from Wi-Fi. Uh, data usage can be free if you're fr uh, frugal. It can be a hotspot uh, for up to eight devices. Okay. Uh, cons. Cons. It's for the iPod Touch only, third and fourth generation. You have to carry... Not the new iPod Touch. Just the third no, and fourth generation. No, five. No. Yeah. Uh, but only because it it locks into place. I right. assume you could use it as a as a as a, a hotspot, but uh, you can't lock it in and make it into one unit. Right. You the another con is you have to carry two units with you, uh, two two device, chargers with you, two different chargers. Right. That is correct. Uh, and each one has its own cable, and the ability to get a signal indoors is limited. Uh. But if you have no smartphone and an iPod Touch, definitely <laughs> worth trying for the near future. So uh, is it a buy, a don't buy, or, or a try? No, it's a try. Yeah. It's, it's a try. It's got to be limited to certainly somewhere who can get it, if nothing else. I just yeah, worry. I mean, you're spending 99 bucks for a device that might not work in six months. You just don't Well, know. that's kind of new now, I think, right? Yeah. This uh, transition right. that may uh, end it. So. Right. Dick, sort thank you. Did you have that category? Do you have sort, sort of, of try, try it? Maybe could be. Yeah, sure. We got that category. Okay, just good. for you. You do you. now. <laughs> you do now. <laughs> thank you, Dick. Dick D. Bartolo does the Giz Whiz. You can hear that every Tuesday. We do it about uh, two p.m. Pacific, five p.m. Eastern time on our Twit Network. And of course, the Giz Fizz which is rapidly becoming one of my favorite shows, even though it's not really an official show on the network. He shows up after the radio show, Saturday afternoons at about 5 o'clock Eastern time. And what's nice about it is you interview people from our chat room. We get to know the community on the Giz Fizz. Yeah, no, the I chat room that. was wonderful, and it is really fun to see the faces be uh, behind the uh, screen names. It's <laughs> fun. Yeah. Sometimes you see a lot more than just the faces, Dick. Yeah, I know. That's the scary part. <laughs> Thank you, Dickie D. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Dick D. Bartolo, Bye. Mad Magazine's maddest writer. This is a jam-packed show. we got a lot of stuff, so we're going to move quickly to our next item. And for that review, it's Shannon Morse, our producer, Snubs. Perhaps you've seen her on the tech feed. She does a great show about security with Darren Kitchen of Hack 5. It's called... Th Threat wire. Threat wire. Threat wire. Threat wire. Threat wire. I always want to say it like that. Threat yeah, wire. if you're like that guy from, uh, what's that <laughs> show Elma on Fudd. TV? Elma Fudd. Elma Fudd. Elma Fudd. Elma Fudd. So Shannon, uh, I don't know why you've got two of them. But yeah, they you, gave me two. They sent you two. All right. <laughs>
This is the new, uh, and uh, this, whoa, <laughs> that is a pretty screen. What is this? This is the Samsung. This is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2.1. 2.1. So it's the newer version of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. And we've reviewed the Galaxy Tab before, mm -hmm. and I remember yes. uh, the very first one we really liked. The Galaxy Note we didn't like so much because of the Wacom tablet uh, mm -hmm. that was interfaced on top of it. How does this one stand? Well, as far as Android goes, it is ice cream sandwich. Oh, that's a disappointment. Yeah, so it doesn't have jelly bean yet. And both of these tablets, even though one is on Sprint and one is Wi-Fi, both of them come with a little bit of bloatware. They have these Samsung Media Hubs, Music Hubs, and Game Hubs built into them. Okay. Uh, and they also the have this phones, little application say. thing that's included yeah. in it. Like, yeah. suggest to me my favorite applications. What will work best for yeah. me? What's interesting about this is it, it kind of has an interesting interface. It looks like there's a kind of a dock here. Yes. And then I can make it go up and down. Yeah, see, I had a problem with that. Every time you make it go up and down, yeah. you cover up those other applications. So you, th these shouldn't be here. They should. You should move these up, I guess. Yeah, right? it was. It was kind of annoying. It's to odd me. that it. This is how it comes out of the box. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly right. That's yeah, I weird. didn't do anything to this interface. Yeah. I left all the original applications on here, so you could see what it looks like right. when it comes out of the box. So a couple of the specifications, the specs of this. It has a one gigahertz dual core CPU inside of it. Okay. It's a Texas Instruments OMAP thirty. 4430. Nowadays, that's not that fast. No, it's not. Yeah. It's incredibly slow it's when you it compare again. this. <laughs> Those icons are underneath. <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll notice whenever you go to different applications or such, it has a slight delay in it. Whenever you're passing from one application to another, even when you're just moving from yeah. one screen to another, like just back and forth, it has a delay. Yeah. And I think that comes from the CPU in it. It's yeah. pretty slow. And it also only has one gig of RAM. So they kind of dropped a lot of the specs from the 10.1 uh, original down when they made this new one, which was kind of weird to me. It's Android ice cream sandwich, of course. That's and a big mistake. And I think I have to think that it would work a little bit snap more snappy. Uh, you would on think Jelly so. Bean, yeah. yeah. And it, um, it comes in 16 gig or 32 gig, but it also has a micro SD slot up here that's included. So you can put in, I think it's up to a 64 gig uh, oh, micro SD nice. card. So you, storage, yeah, you? so if you wanted to buy this, I would say get the 16 gig mm -hmm. and then get a much cheaper 64 gig micro SD card and stick it in there. So you don't end up spending the extra hundred bucks to buy the 32 gig version. I have to say the screen looks pretty good. What's the resolution on this? It's okay. It's 1280 by 800, which is right. the same that a lot of smaller tablets come yeah. with. That's what the old Galaxy Note was too. Huh? Yeah, so for myself, I use a um, iPad I think it's the third gen at home. So when I first booted this up, I could see the pixels on it. It's I could definitely right yeah. see a big difference yeah. compared to what I use at home. So for me, I didn't like the resolution, but it may be okay for some people. It's a it's a bright screen. It, it looks like a, a it, it is, must be IPS because it looks out. like the screen. If you angle. lock and unlock this one, yeah. so now look at this image and look at this image, and you'll notice. Wait a minute, why is your why is your why is your dandelion so much smaller than my dandelion? <laughs> well, check out the uh, the color saturation on both of yeah. these. They're completely different, and I didn't do anything to them. So these the brightness. So there may be some variation in the panels. Yeah, there's some definite variation yeah. in the monitors. Yeah. I was like, what? That's the same picture on both of them. They should not should not be a difference like, in color. It looks like it's even cropped differently. Yeah, it does. That's <laughs> very that's very odd. <laughs> Uh, one nice thing about these, though, is um, although it's only available in 16 and 32, which will work for most people, it is available in 3G for T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon, too. So you have lots and lots of choices. But it's $399 for the normal Wi-Fi version, mm. and it goes up in price by about 100 bucks if you choose to put 3G on it as well. It does have a feature I like, which is the swipe feature on its T9 uh, yes, it does keyboard. have swipe. So that's a, that's a nice feature. I'm, same, Samsung's putting that on some of its other phones as well now. How do you feel about the weight? It, it seems like it's lighter than an iPad, yeah. is it? Yeah, it's about yeah. 1.3 pounds. Okay. So it's not bad in weight, and I feel like the design as far as like the quality is pretty well done. It has this, it's a plastic back, but I like the silver color, so that's nice. It doesn't have a whole lot of labeling on it, just Samsung right here and then Samsung on the front. Yeah. Um, I kept on getting screwed up as far as far as where all the buttons are. I kept on feeling like holding it like this, and I felt like the buttons should be along the side over right, here. Right. And instead, they're up at the top, so I keep on going. Eh. 
That's one thing that bothers me. Every tablet and every phone has them in different They're positions. They're all You're different. You're always going to learn. <laughs> You've just got to always learn new new positions. Which yeah, is just, it drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, screen, as far as it going from side to side, the bezel is a little bit larger than what I would like. It's 10.1 uh, inches and uh, 6.9 inches from top to bottom. So decent there's size lot, there. There's a lot of black around. Isn't there? Yeah, black. lots of black. I think yeah. they could have increased it in size a little bit. Yeah. And the uh, the battery lasts pretty much all day, so you're not going to have a problem nice. there. I yeah, like that. so it's okay. Um, the camera I had a serious issue with. Oh, try turning that up. It gets pretty loud. Is the sound pretty good? Yeah. So you can press this little button right here. Oh, you're turning it down now. Oops. Turn it all the way up. There you go. So yeah. it gets pretty loud. Right. It has the speakers right here on the front, so everything's going to be coming out straight to you. Should be good for watching Pretty movies. Nice. You can get 720p on here. Yeah, on yeah. yeah. Now, the camera is what I wanted to show so you as well. So let's try that camera. Here, I'll take a picture of you. The camera sucks. You don't like it? Just going to let you know now. Oh. There's no flash. Oh, well, there's no flash, but that no was... No flash. Maybe it's because the subject so it's is so good attractive. And lighting. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's a bad picture at all. You're yeah. so funny. Did the face recognition. But um, look how grainy these pictures are. Yeah. You can tell that it's only three megapixels. Can you believe that? Yeah. It's so great. Three megapixels. That's and it says it takes 720 HD video, but look at this video. It is so bad. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't uh, like knock, it. Knock. Who is that? That is, boy, that doesn't know. look like you at all. I mean, he's an attractive fellow, <laughs> obviously, but <laughs> but I just didn't like the camera quality and yeah. the front cam even. It's, it's just a VGA camera on it. So the webcam quality, like if you're making face calls, not going to do so well. You know, all of this would be fine if it were a really cheap tablet, but it yeah, isn't really but cheap. but it's expensive. And yeah. I feel like with all these drop downs that they did with like the CPU and the RAM and the camera quality, they should have made the price 250 and then maybe I would consider it. Now, but of course, what I love is the well. Nexus 10, which is that super mm -hmm. high-res screen. That but one is really, really nice. But you can't get that because <laughs> it's been out of stock for a while. I know. So maybe sure. this is this is one of the things that if people want to get it for the holidays, they might yeah. be stuck getting the, uh, the the Samsung. This is the the Galaxy Tab. Galaxy Tab 2 10.1. 2 10.1. Yeah. I know. There's so many like it's Galaxy excessive. Tabs now. I'm like, yeah. which one's which? I'm so confused. Pros and cons. So, pros and cons. The pros. It's got a solid design. I wouldn't say I would throw this at Tony necessarily, but... It feels pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty decent design. It's nice and sturdy. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's going to flop around on you. Right. Uh, really loud speakers on the front. I really, really like those speakers. And it's got very fast Wi-Fi. Sprint, on the other hand, not so good, yeah. obviously. Uh -huh. um, I didn't get to check out T-Mobile, Verizon, well, support, and AT&T. Oh, yeah, we are getting Sprint 4G. Yeah, so we're getting Sprint this 4G. Will, this will support the Sprint LTE network. We're lucky in Petaluma they're rolling it out early, and it's flipping back and forth between 3G and 4G because <laughs> it isn't yeah. officially rolled out yet. But I did see 4G, so that means it will support yes. LTE in those networks. Yes, those, it will. Sprint areas. And then the cons, of course, is the really, really slow P CPU. Um, I was able to play a little bit of Angry Birds Star Wars on there, and I was, I was okay with that, but the CPU quality overall is not that great. And uh, the resolution I wasn't too happy with, but it may be okay for some people. Right. I think it would be all right. And the cameras, I just couldn't get over the cameras. They were just terrible. So it so, sounds like it's a definite not buy. You know, for the Sprint version, I would say not buy just because they haven't rolled out the 4G LTE right. to all the really big boom places yet. Um, overall, I would say I would give it a try. Um, I would hope that they would lower the price a little bit, and mm -hmm. then I would definitely give it um, a try overall. And there are other choices, the Acers and so and the oh, Asus's. Oh yeah, there's and so lots forth. of so other choices. Maybe so. it's time to look at an alternative. Keep your eye out for coupons. Now we do have a Nexus 4 in house that we're reviewing. Yes, we do. Tony are we got ever going to get a Nexus 10? I hope so. <laughs> Leo, can you buy me a Nexus 10? My, my, you can't. That's the problem. I would ah. if I could, but I can't. They're uh, they're sold out, and as soon as we can, we'll get one. eBay we'll it. Give you a review. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to eBay it. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon Morse. No problem. Snubs at Snubs on the the Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she's also the producer of the show. And we hope to have her on more shows on our network soon. So we just think. Yeah, we'll see. Meanwhile, <laughs> folks, I want to show you something. I got my new stamps.com just came today this is the stamps.com digital scale the brand new one that you'll get if you sign up for stamps.com you know this is the wrong time 
if you're in the mailing business, you know, you send invoices or marketing materials out, or maybe you're a, 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 a eBay or Amazon seller and you send stuff out, uh, you know, to, to buyers, this is the wrong time to try to go to the post office. It's amateur hour. Everybody's there selling, you know, sending out their Christmas gifts and so forth. With stamps.com, you don't have to. Any time of the year, you can buy and print official U.S. postage right from your computer and print it out using your printer, which is pretty darn awesome. And with stamps.com digital scale, oh, this is so sweet. This is the new one that just came out. You're going to be able to weigh every package up to 25 pounds via USB. How do you like that? Ooh. How do you like them apples? Boy, that's nice. Plugs right into your computer, so you always have exactly the right postage on every package. Very cool. It even prints the address on the mailing label and takes it from the Amazon, PayPal, eBay, Etsy site, or from your QuickBooks or from your address book. So you don't have to spend any time typing stuff in. If you're sending international, it'll fill in the uh, international forms. Oh, uh, you it get discounts. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. You get discounts you won't get anywhere else, even at the post office. Um, I just am a big fan of stamps.com. It's, it's, it's the professional way to mail. And now you can try it free and even get the scale for free when you visit stamps.com. No, wait. Oh, you see, you see that $80 value? That's probably good enough. You say, I'll, I'll take that. But no, click the radio microphone because you heard about it on a podcast. We should get them to say netcast, right? <laughs> Enter the word before you buy. Before you buy. That's all one word. Go. And now that $80 value is a $110 bonus offer. $55 in postage coupons over the, the few months. You get the digital scale for free. You just pay shipping and handling. That's about 5 bucks. You get a supply kit and a one-month trial of stamps.com. This is just such a great deal. You know, you can cancel at any time, pay nothing, and that scale is yours forever. So it's worth doing it. You know what's cool about stamps.com, too? What? If you do this at home, say you're an eBay seller, and you have to ship out a whole bunch of stuff, and you don't want to go to USPS to they the post office, it. you can schedule a pickup. Yeah. They come and get it. Awesome. You don't get it. You actually don't have to get up from your desk. <laughs> I am a big fan of stamps.com. In fact, they'll, you can even if you're doing express or certified mail, you could it'll handle the email going out to your customer saying here's your tracking oh, number. Love it. All of that stuff's just done automatically. Stamps.com. I want you to give it a try today. All right, I'm going to walk over to say hi to Brian. Thank you, Shannon. Bye. Brian, let's say hi to Brian Burnett. He is our technical director. See, we put everybody to work here. Hey, Leo. And Brian today has a uh, follow-up to review you did some months ago on Before You Buy, right. right? Well, you went on vacation in Australia. You picked up one of these guys. The <laughs> I wanted the new 3. Hero 3. Um, now, this is the silver. The black hadn't come out yet. Right. But these are more compact. See how much smaller it is than the original <laughs> Hero? They also uh, have some features that the original Hero doesn't have. And supposedly, uh, better uh, quality. Uh, yeah, uh, but I did a whole video about it, so let's take That's a look. That's the best way to find out. Let's see. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Burnett here from BYB to show you the GoPro Hero Silver, the newest uh, GoPro camera to come out. I also have the first GoPro camera that was released all the way back in July 2010, along with the GoPro Hero 2, which we'll also be taking a look at with the uh, Wi-Fi backpack. So first, let's focus on the newest GoPro, the Silver Edition. Basically, this is the same camera as the Hero 2, same sensor, uh, but t packed into a smaller form factor. Still has the same 11 megapixel uh, sensor, but it's half the size of the old GoPro Hero 2, and it also has Wi-Fi built in. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the new GoPro is that it is almost half the width of the old uh, generation. So if you look on the side of the GoPro, the new Hero 3, uh, you have mini HDMI out, you have your mini USB out, and unlike the previous versions of the Heroes, it has a micro SD card slot. The previous Heroes use a full-sized SD card. Alright, so now that we've introduced the Silver Edition, let's just take a quick look back at the Hero 2 uh, with a Wi-Fi pack adapter. Now, these cameras are essentially the same now with the, the Wi-Fi pack. They're both able to stream a live preview to your Android or iOS device. The only real complaints I had ever had about uh, using a GoPro camera previously was the menu system was a little archaic and you only have one button to scroll through the menu. Now that you are able to link this to your phone or tablet, uh, not only do you get a viewfinder, which was one of my complaints before about the GoPro, but you get uh, options to change in the menu system. So you can change the camera settings, the frame rate,
just basically everything that irked me about not being able to options not being able to change in the menu system, you're able to easily access through your touch screen device. There is a little bit of a de delay using the video, but now that you're able to tether it to your phone um, and use that as a view screen, uh, it really increases the versatility of the GoPro. As far as battery life for both these cameras, um, I'd say they're both about the same. Uh, on the front of the screen, it gives you a little timer of how long the battery should last for. Uh, typically on a full charge, it'll say about an hour and 51 minutes, and that's pretty accurate. So what's included with the Hero 3 Silver Edition is the waterproof housing, uh, rechargeable battery, and mounting hardware, which means it comes with a quick release mount, a three-way pivot arm, and a one flat adhesive mount. So the pros for the GoPro Hero Silver, foremost would be the size. They shrank it to half the size of the previous Go GoPro, and it also has Wi-Fi built in. Another pro would be the video, obviously. Um, as you can tell from the footage I've gotten, you wouldn't be able to get those shots with a typically sized camera. There's a lot of pros for this camera, and one of the final ones would be uh, versatility. The only limits to these cameras are where you can stick them without them falling off. As for cons, accessories would be one of them. Uh, the Silver Edition doesn't come with a lot of mounting hardware, which may be a good or bad thing for you. Uh, if you own some of the previous GoPros, a lot of the mounting hardware that you already have would work for it. Um, if this is your first GoPro, some of the things that you might need for recording, you'll have to purchase separately. And some of the stuff that GoPro offers on their website seems a little bit overpriced. If you look around on eBay or on Amazon, you might be able to find a better deal. Also, another con for these little cameras is uh, low light situations. They can get kind of hazy and they don't really deal very well with a uh, nighttime video. So is the GoPro Silver Edition Hero 3 a buy, try, or don't buy? Um, it's definitely a buy. Uh, if, you, if this is going to be your first GoPro, the Silver Edition is a really nice package altogether. Um, if you are wondering if you should upgrade from the previous version, Hero 2, or if you should just get the Wi-Fi backpack to um, basically put it as at the same caliber as the new GoPro, I'd say if you already have the Hero 2 and you're happy with the video that you've been getting with it, stick with the Hero 2, get the Wi-Fi backpack, backpack with remote, and you'll still be able to tether it to your phone. Um, if you're new to GoPros, definitely look at the new Hero 3s because not only are they smaller and lighter, they have everything included. You don't have to buy an accessory uh, Wi-Fi backpack. I'm Brian Burnett. This has been the GoPro Silver. Thanks for watching. It does come with a waterproof case. So you don't have to go out and buy that separately. In fact, it comes with two cases, one with a waterproof case and one with vents in it so that you can use that if you want to hear the microphone right. better. And it does have a removable battery, so you could buy, I presume, extra batteries in that way because the battery life's not great on this. Right. I didn't realize. So you're saying this is the same sensor as the 8 Hero 2. Right. Um, it's just a much lighter, thinner with built-in Wi-Fi. Is the, yeah, is, it's it's just as if they compressed the old Hero. Right. It's the same 11 megapixel uh, right. sensor inside of it. And I love it that you don't have to use this really funky push-button system on the menus. It's just yeah. forever to set the menus. Now, because you can use the phone... Uh, you can control it. All the settings are available on the phone, and, and it makes a great viewfinder, so you don't have to buy the viewfinder back either. Let me ask, though, do you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network? Uh, yes. It requires Wi-Fi. So if you're in the field, don't expect to use the phone as a viewfinder or no? Uh, the way it works is the GoPro actually acts as a Wi-Fi access point. So this, so you're so logging into this, you so you log can't into use the this and your internet access at right, the same time. Right. Got it. Actually, that's great, because that means if I'm out in the field, at least I still have my viewfinder. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I'm glad I bought this. There Me is too. an uh, yeah, You can't have it. Oh. There is an upgraded version, though. You might want the Hero 3 Black. Right. It's now out now, and that is a much upgraded sensor. That is. That one will even do 4K at 12 frames per second. Yeah. It's 100 bucks more. Um, that might be one to look at if you're pretty serious. I think these GoPros are amazing little cameras. I, I love those wait. things. Yeah. And the underwater housing means you can take pictures of fish. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Brian is our technical director on the show. That means he does all the switching. Now, one of the things, I don't know if you all know this, but one of the things we do in the Brick House is when we have another set, we will rotate the technical director. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to push you around right now so that we can quick switch over to the other camera so they can see me. Look at this. Feats of strength already. Festivus has begun. My first feat of strength. I'm going <laughs> to...
<laughs> rotate you around oh. so we can walk on over and say hi to Alex. I have Ooh. been looking and to Russell Tammany, our IT guy. I've been looking forward to this particular review for a long time. Alex is going to do a shootout between the hot new Windows phone. Hello, Flowmaster. Hello, Leo. So you've got uh, two Windows phones here, the Windows 8, Windows Phone 8 phones. Yes. The Lumia 920. That's not confusing at all. Huh? That's not confusing at all. I know. I get in trouble because I say Windows 8 phone, yeah, and no, it's no, Windows, no, Windows Phone 8. Windows Phone 8. Different things. Although even Bill Gates says Windows 8 phone. But he doesn't work there anymore. That's true. So no. he, would, he wouldn't no. know these things. So uh, you've got the Lumia 920, which is a review unit. Right. But you bought... I the bought HTC the HTC 8X. 8X. Um, we did get it for review as well on the same day that I bought it, but I just used my own because I bought it. Well, I think it's kind of telling that well, you bought it. it well, partially. Um, uh, the 8X is only available on, uh, or sorry, the 920 is only available on AT&T. And Although on there many rumors about Verizon having it. So far, no. So far, no. The Verizon's got the uh, the 822, which Tony reviewed, which isn't so good, right. and the 8X. Right. Uh, AT&T's got the 920, so I, did, I couldn't get that one anyway. So the 8X was the obvious choice for me. Well, let's get going. Let's uh, let's hear your All review. Right. Hi, this is Alex Gumpel from Twit and Before You Buy. And today, I will be reviewing the... Um, uh, um, uh, uh, oh, oh, and, oh, the Nokia Lumia 920 and Windows Phone 8X by HTC. Now, these are both brand new phones that just came out last month. And these are the new Windows phones running Windows Phone 8. Uh, these two happen to be the top of the line Windows phones that just came out. So um, because of that, they have very similar specs. Uh, they both have 1.5 gigahertz dual core processors. The 920 has a 4.5 inch pure motion HD plus clear black display. Whatever that means. It sounds impressive, but it, you know, it's just marketing speech. Uh, while the 8X has a 4.3 inch screen, they're both IPS displays. Uh, they both look fantastic. Um, Audio wise, they, they each have their own little special thing. The Lumia has a uh, Dolby headphone built in, so when you're listening with headphones, you get this little extra boost, uh, while the 8X has Beats audio, which basically does the same thing. Uh, let's see, the 920 has 32 gigabytes of storage, while the 8X has 16 gigabytes, um, although apparently you can also get it at 8 gigabytes, and I don't know why you would ever want that, but you, you, the option is there. Um, the 920 has a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. The 8X has a 1,800 milliamp hour battery. Now, both of these phones support NFC, which is a new feature in Windows Phone 8. Um, so you can send pictures, you can send contacts, you can send URLs um, to each other. And with the right app, uh, you can also just send just raw data, you know, text or whatever else um, to any other device, including Android phones and PCs, anything that has NFC. Um, and you can also you know, receive it as well um, if you have the right app to recognize it. Um, now, the, the 920 uh, has wireless charging built in. The 8X does not, except for the one on Verizon. So if you happen to be on Verizon and you get your 8X, uh, you will have wireless charging ready. So if you have a pad, you can drop it on there and be charged. And of course, same with the 920. Now, the 920 is made out of a polycarbonate plastic, which I think is just a fancy term for plastic. Um, the cyan and the black phones are, uh, have a matte finish, while the white, yellow, and I think the red phones have a glossy finish. And uh, from my brief encounter with the glossy one, um, it, that one just feels like smooth, glossy plastic, which I don't particularly care for. But the matte ones uh, have this really nice feel that it's not quite rough, like there's no texture, um, but it's not quite smooth either, and you can hear your finger go across it. So there's some, there's texture there, but it's not enough to feel, and it just, it creates this, it's, it's, it, I can't describe it, it's just it feels really nice. Um, and, the, and the corners you think would be sharp, but they're actually beveled just a little bit, so running your finger along it just feels really nice. Holding it in your hand feels nice, it's a solid phone, it's big, um, and it's heavy. Now, uh, a lot of reviewers have talked about the weight, and it's not so much the weight that's the problem, um, 6.5 ounces, which is heavy for a phone, but um, like if you put this in your pocket, your pants aren't gonna fall off because of the weight. Um, and it's not like you're struggling to hold it and pick it up. Uh, it's the weight that's combined with the size um, and the shape of the phone and also the material is a little bit slippery too. So the combination of all those things just kind of makes it unwieldy to hold uh, with one hand at least uh, when you're trying to pick it up and you know, fumble with it and type and get your you know, pinky under there for support. It just, it, it, you can easily drop it if, you, if you're not careful. Um, so that's kind of an issue, um, but that's what you get for having a big phone. And the battery on this phone is pretty nice. Um, I managed to get it to last about six days on one charge. 
granted it's mostly on standby, um, and I maybe went in about once a day to do something quick and nothing very power intensive, but it did last six days nonetheless, which is kind of nice. You know when someone like Burke breaks a the thermostat and so it gets really cold and so you put gloves on and you don't want to take your gloves off because it's so cold and but you still got to do something with your phone? Well, with the 920, that's not a problem. Nokia has designed a super sensitive capacitive touchscreen for the Lumia. Um, so even if you're wearing thick leather gloves, you can still play with your phone with ease and warmth. Or even if you're not wearing gloves and for some reason you have a screwdriver and want to just touch your phone and play with it with a screwdriver, you can do that too. Pretty much anything metal works, keys, um, more screwdrivers, you know, whatever. Now, of course, one of the big features of the 920 is the camera, specifically the low light photography you can do with the camera. Now, there are some weird things I've noticed, uh, one of which is that you tend to have to take a picture twice for it to come out nicely in the darkness, um, especially if it's something that's not close up that I can focus on before taking the picture. So if you're taking a picture of a grand vista at night, um, the first one will probably be blurry and maybe the colors will be wrong and just out of focus and dark or something. Um, then we take it again shortly after uh, it will be much better. Now also your subjects are going to have to stand still for a bit um, if you want a clear picture. Uh, if you're trying to take a candid group shot of a bunch of people, you're probably not going to find one image that's going to be really good uh, because someone's going to be moving and someone isn't, so you might have one good person and then the others are blurry and you're going to have to do some Photoshop magic to clear that um, unless you tell everyone to hold still for a second. Now as good as the night pictures are, uh, in daylight it's not so good. Um, if you zoom in on this picture here, you can see that it kind of has almost a watercolor effect. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Um, supposedly Nokia is working on a fix for that. That will come out as a software update soon. Now another benefit of the optical stabilization is the video. Uh, they have special software magic that uh, compensates for all the motion that happens uh, even with the, the springs. Um, but it does some weird stuff and so video that you take will be very smooth. Um, if you're just holding it with one hand, you're not going to get much wobble. Uh, or any sort of shakiness. Um, as you can see here, things are very, very smooth panning around. Um, and also, as you notice, uh, it's very dark. The low light stuff only works for stills and not for video. Now, something you get with the Lumia phones is you have Nokia's own apps instead of some of the stock apps. Um, in this case, we have Nokia Maps, Nokia Drive, Nokia City Lens, Nokia Music, and some lens apps uh, provided by them. Now, Nokia Drive is marked as beta. And I don't know if that means that they just didn't have time to finish it for Windows Phone 8 or um, if uh, they're just going to continuously work on it like Google. Now functionally this app is good, uh, gives you the three quarter view, follows you as you're going, gives you turn by turn directions and all that other good stuff that you want in a navigation app. Um, however, I have to ding it for the UI. Uh, they tried to make it look Metro, but it's not really Metro. I'm sorry, not Metro, it's that term that we can't use. So like if you go into a menu here, you know, you got icons and you got lines and you got scroll buttons. Even though you can still scroll with your thumb, you still got the buttons there. It seems to be just left over from the old days. And if you go back to the main thing, you know, you got zoom buttons on the top, even though pinch to zoom still works. So it seems like Nokia is just keeping it the way it was and they're not adapting it to the Windows Phone way of doing things, uh, which I don't think is a good idea for either Microsoft or Nokia. Uh, when they're trying to create this unified environment. Now, the Lumi also comes with some Nokia-made lenses, which are apps that you can access through the camera, which basically just kind of extend the camera functionality for specific uses, one of which is panorama, which is self-explanatory. Um, some notes, though, is uh, it only works in landscape, and it's only horizontal um, and not a full 360. I think you get five, uh, five pictures that it stitches together. Now, the Windows Phone 8X by HTC. Uh, this phone is also made out of plastic, but it's coated in this soft, rubbery, coating of some sort. Um, it's about as thick in the center as the, as the 920, um, but it's got these tapered edges. And so with that and the coating, it's also a little bit thinner. Um, it just feels really nice in your hand. It's probably one of the nicest phones I've ever felt in my hand. Um, and I just can't get over that. It just feels really nice to hold. Uh, it's also a little bit lighter. It's 4.6 ounces. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a delight. Now, the power button on the top right um, is a little too flush with the body. Uh, and it's kind of hard to just to feel for it, and you have to sometimes look and make sure that you're pressing in the right spot. Now, there's one thing I really have to complain about, and that is uh, that Microsoft has decided to split out the Maps app in kind of two separate functions. Um, there's the Maps app, which uh, can give you your maps, obviously, um, which and now you can actually download them, which is nice, um, and uh, you can get your directions, but the directions don't update in real time. It doesn't follow you as you're driving, or if you go somewhere else, it doesn't update and try to reconfigure from where you are now. Uh, to do that, you have to actually go back and re-enter the destination, have it regenerate the list from scratch. Uh, the turn-by-turn -turn navigations is now split off to specific navigation apps. 
um, on the Lumia, that's Nokia Drive. On this phone, I have VZ Navigator because this is a Verizon phone and Verizon has decided to make their own navigation app. Unfortunately, VZ Navigator is awful and you have to pay for it on a monthly subscription. Why on earth would anyone want to pay a monthly subscription for an awful navigation app when there are so many good free services on the internet these days? Of course, you can uninstall this app like you can any other app on Windows Phone. However, there are no replacements available at this time. I'm hoping that there'll be some nice developer that will make a really great navigation app that will plug into the Maps app. Um, but uh, as of now, there are no navigation apps available that have that functionality. And speaking of Verizon and great things they do, they've disabled group messaging on this phone. So if I send an SMS message to multiple recipients, they'd each get it all individually instead of doing this MMS magic and creating this little group chat room thing, which worked with the iPhone. And I don't think it worked with Android, but it might work on the current one, but not the old one. But it did work on Windows Phone 7. And it works also on these phones, on other networks, just not on Verizon because Verizon wants to be special. And Verizon is very special. Now the camera on this phone is also really nice, uh, but one thing this has that the 920 does not is a dedicated image processing chip. And this allows you to capture photos quicker than you can on that phone. Now the camera itself on this phone is really nice as well. Um, with low light though, uh, the brightness is actually a little more close to reality than it would be on the 920, which seems to bump things up. And uh, also uh, it's a little more cooler and more blue on that. This one is a little warmer and grainier, uh, sometimes a little too warm and grainy, but there is an auto fix button, which seems to compensate for that. Uh, but it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't, and you want to just stick with the originals. Now, the front-facing camera on this phone is really nice and actually better than the 920s. It has a really wide field of view. Here's a picture taken from the steering wheel of my car. Uh, there's a picture of me and Shannon. Uh, there's Tony uh, taking a picture of himself at the Christmas party the other day, and there's a bunch of us. Um, here's four of us trying to fit ourselves all into one frame. And the color is also really nice. Here's Brian and I uh, taking a picture of the front face of the camera on the 8X compared to the front face of the camera on the 920. And the camera's resolution is 1920 by 1080 and does record full 1080p video. Now uh, let's get to the pros and cons. We'll start with the 920. Uh, the obvious pro is the camera uh, and the amazing low light pictures you can take with it. Um, also the battery life uh, being very nice is uh, another pro. Uh, however, the cons are that it's just unwieldy. As nice as the body looks and, and is kind of to feel, when you're holding in one hand and trying to do phone stuff and just kind of fumble around, it is just too unwieldy. I hate to say it. Um, also, the whole thing with the Nokia trying to do their own thing with the apps and not, not play well with the ecosystem doing their own thing, creating this kind of fragmentation, that I would say is another con with the Nokia phones. All right, so now the 8X, uh, pros are, it just feels really light and thin and just feels wonderful in your hand and you just want to hold it. Um, also, the camera is, even though it's not as good with low light as the 920s, it's still a great camera. Um, cons are, with 16 gigs, it's got pretty limited storage with no micro SD expansion. I don't know why, but that's what it is. Uh, and also, there's no real navigation app, at least on Verizon's version. Now, the pricing of these phones is a little interesting. Uh, the 920, at least in the US, uh, goes for $99 on contract or $449 uh, retail. Uh, while the 8X goes for either $99 to $199 on contract or $449 to $549 on retail. I guess it depends if it's the 16 gig or the 8 gig version, um, both of which are smaller than the 920s uh, 32 gigs. Um, so the 8X is actually typically more expensive than the 920, which is a little surprising, um, but that's what it is. So buy, try, or don't buy. I would say both of these phones are a buy. Um, they're both flagship Windows phones, and they both have near identical specs. It's just in the specialties where one is better than the other, and it just really depends on what you're looking for. If you want to take amazing low-light photos, or you like Nokia's apps, um, or if you just need a good navigation app, um, go with the 920. Um, if those things are not really quite worth the heft that you get with the 920, and you just want an overall excellent phone that just looks beautiful and feels great in your hand, and it's just an excellent thing, uh, go with the 8X. Um, but either one, you can't go wrong. They're both very good. Um, just go to a store and see if you can play with both of them and just compare them and see which one you like better because they're both very good. Um, so anyway, I'm Ellis Gumpel for Twit, and this is my review of the Nokia Lumia 920 and Windows Phone 8X by HTC. Thanks. So, but you, you, you avoided the question that I really wanted you to answer. Pick one. Can you pick one? Pick one. I, I prefer the 8X. Yeah. 
It's feel is better, and it's lighter. But you're right. If you want a better camera or you want Nokia navigation, you don't have a choice. And those low-light photos are amazing. They, so. I, but did you see the sunset or the, uh, the cityscape? That was just gorgeous. Yeah. Well, I know you and did. I, I have more pictures, actually, that I wanted to show, but I mean, the review is already going on <laughs> so long as it was. So I'm going to probably make a little director's cut that I'm going to put on the YouTube channel. Okay, good. That'll have uh, some picture examples. So if, that, if you want even so, more. Yeah, if you want the long, the <laughs> we'll special We'll put a little intermission version. in that extended version so that you can take a break, go to the bathroom, and so forth. Um, another thing also I didn't point out is that uh, these are... They're both striking phones when you're when you have them out in public. They they're actually both, they're are both beautiful. Color, yeah. And they also have the other colors as well. Um, and when you know people ask you like, what phone is that? Right. And I hate to say it, but there is no way that you can say it's a Windows phone and be sound cool. Yeah. It's I don't know just, if that it's matters. It's lame but sounding. Yeah. Well, you no, but it gives you a you certain you know hey you're an iconoclast. Oh, you well, you thank dance you. to the beat of a different drummer. I yeah, mean, needed to talk there. to you about that, actually. <laughs> Alex Gumpel, he's the flow master and our Windows expert, and we'll be working uh, on a new show about, yes, Windows Phone 8, and, somebody, and, and, and Metro, and RT, and somebody in the chat room suggested, which I thought was a very good suggestion, that we call the show Windows Show 8. <laughs> so maybe we will. Yeah, until Windows 8 is, is old. Well, and you call then, it uh, Windows Show 9. It's Windows Show Vista. Windows Show <laughs> Me. Would have been fun to have a Windows Show Vista. I wonder why we never did that. Yeah, good point. Now, thank you very much, Alex Gumbel. Coming up in just a bit, we're going to take a look at what you could think of almost as a precursor to Google Glass, a heads-up display in your ski goggles. I think this is an interesting idea. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Audible.com, the audio bookstore that contains more than 100,000 wonderful books. I'm a, As you know, I'm a huge Audible fan. I've been a member since there was only a few thousand books in Audible. 2001. I have 500 books in my library alone. And one of the things I love about Audible, even on Windows Phone, they have a great Audible app, uh, Windows Phone, iPhone, BlackBerry, and Android, that allows you to see all the uh, books you've ever purchased. Download anything that you want to listen to. They're always in your library. They're always good. That's wonderful. Uh, history is one of my favorite subjects. Nonfiction uh, of all kinds, business and biography. They've also got great fiction. I love listening to novels on audible.com. They come to life. They're really movies in your mind. Before you go see Life of Pi, for instance, you might want to check out the amazing book, Life of Pi. In fact, I'd highly recommend it by Yann Martel. Uh, I hear the movie's great, haven't seen it, but I love the book. It's one of my favorite audio books of all time. It really comes to life. And, and you know, if you see the movie, you're going to kind of know the ending of the book, and, and I think it'll spoil it for you. So I think you really should read the book first and then see the movie. But it's up to you. All I can say is I got a free one for you. It could be Life of Pi or any of the other 100,000 titles. Visit audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month subscription. Nice way to start with Audible. Your first month's free. Your first credit is free. You can cancel at any time. Pay nothing, but that book will be yours forever. And I think it's just a great way to start. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And Audible members, listen up. Anybody, even if you're not an Audible member, can get a free book right now at uh, audible.com slash Sanderson. They're offering Brandon Sanderson's amazing novella, Legion, absolutely free. Audible.com slash Sanderson. It's a two-hour novella that I loved. It's really good. And I think they're smart to do this. It's a good way to just to kind of dip your foot in the audio uh, book water. Uh, at the gym, in the car, uh, when I'm walking the dog, when I'm washing dishes, whenever I'm doing something where I couldn't hold a book, I listen. I even listen uh, when I'm going to bed. I just love it. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Let's say hi to Russell Tammany. He's uh, really, he's not a Twit employee, but he, he feels like he is one. We see him all the time. Yeah. We're well, so happy to have you part of the team. Yes, thank you. Always always hanging around here. So I also <laughs> get to review some of your devices. That's nice. Yeah, Russell's business, Exponentia, is a, a, a contract IT consultancy. Yeah, we do managed service providers. So. Fantastic job. Uh, you know, the, really the answer if something's not working here is call Russell. And it will, and it will work, absolutely. Except for this fire. You've not got this working yet. <laughs> the fireplace is... Yeah, I, I, I can't help with those analog types. It's of very things. analog. So, now, are you uh, a skier? Yeah, so I am a skier. So uh, what I have here is the uh, Recon MOD Live. Um, We've been hearing a lot about these. these. Are, this is a really cool gadget. Yeah. Um, I've actually seen them advertised uh, you know, in ski shops and things like that. So uh, when we got this in, uh, it just happened to be planning a trip to Whistler. Uh, so I took them with me. That's and, awesome. Uh, so these are ski goggles with a difference. Yeah, so these are regular uh, ski goggles. There's actually a bunch of different brands and models from all of the manufacturers of 
uh, ski goggles oh. that you'd be familiar with. Interesting. Like, you know, Oakley. These are Uvex. So uh, you can great put this in an existing pair. Yeah. So uh, they've marked. Um, there's a tag on here somewhere, but uh, they've marked certain goggles as recon ready. Got it. And recon ready means that um, I'm going to turn this around here a bit and show you that on the inside, it's got the like battery unit and then the display unit that's been um, kind of installed into a regular set of goggles. Does it add a lot to the weight or thickness of the It goggles? doesn't add a lot to the weight or thickness. Uh, it doesn't really take away anything from your peripheral vision, which, you know, goggles kind of already do. So, right. Um, so I took these up there with me and uh, used them for three full days skiing. So we should say you're not reviewing the goggles because you get to choose your goggles. You chose a yeah. pair that you like so anyway. So these are UVX goggles, yeah. which are which are great. And yeah. in you know, all cool. the conditions that you need, you can change out the faceplate on the goggles for you know different tints. Sometimes if it's bright, you want a dark right. tint. And right. if it's you know snowing like it did the first day, you want a nice light tint. What, what, where are you seeing the... So this is so, so first of okay. all, what are you seeing? So there? what you see in here is it's not an actual heads up display that okay. you would think. So it's not projected over your normal field of vision. That might be dangerous. That would that would probably be dangerous. And well, I you know, that would be very cool to have. I, I like things that the Terminator you know, HUD. Right, you know, kind I can't I can't wait until I get a car where, you know, you can just right. drive and look at everything in the wind windscreen. Right. So okay. Uh, what this is, is in the bottom right-hand corner of the goggles, uh, let me turn this around here a little bit. We'll have some B-roll here in a bit later, but um, it has the little screen there. So what so, you that's, do is, so that's just kind of in the periphery of your vision. It's in the periphery of your vision. You can see it all the time, but if you look down into it, uh, it'll have a full display. It's it's not going to be visible here on camera right now. But, but your eye's so uh, close to it Your eye's so close to it. It's a small display, but it looks yeah. full size. Yeah. So um, what this... Uh, lets you do though is uh, it's actually running Android. It's a kind of modified version of what looks like gingerbread and it has a bunch of neat features. One of those features is it can keep track of all of your statistics. So <laughs> your vertical drop, elevation, numbers of runs, uh, your air time, you know, if you go off any jumps it'll try to figure <laughs> out how really? long you're in the air. Wow, that's cool. Um, and, now, and it uh, does that, do you have an Android phone that it ties yeah, to? Yeah, so it ties with Android and uh, iPhone uh, and uh, so you can use the accelerometer, with, gyroscope. No, no, no. You can use it with or without your phone. So oh. this is an independent device. It has its own accelerometer. It has its own accelerometer, GPS. Um, okay. It has all of that stuff built and that's in. That's what you're wearing on your wrist. Now, what you're wearing on the wrist is the controller for it. So oh, okay. uh, this is a controller where it can fit over your uh, actual. Uh, yeah, like in that picture there. You just put it over... It goes over the sleeve. The sleeve. You need that so that you can press the buttons. Right. And they're so big buttons because you're buttons. wearing your ski you gloves. You can use obviously. them while your gloves are on. Yeah. And it's very easy to control and kind of feel your way through the interface. It's right. been It's been designed to be simple to use while you're skiing. Um, so one of the cool features is, is you just show up, you turn it on, it figures out what ski resort you're at. So it came up <laughs> with Whistler. It knew. It knew that I was at Whistler Blackcomb. It knew where I was on the mountain. It knew which wow. run I was on. It had maps of... Uh, That's an actual run we're looking this at This is a map. downloaded run. So you can download the um, On the 27th uh, in Petaluma. You can go into view runs and it'll show you individual <laughs> That's runs. That's so um, cool. So it's uh, for those who are listening, it's a uh, it's a satellite map of the terrain. You see the snow, you see the runs, and you see a blue line with a time at either end so that you know at 10.13 you began your run. 14 minutes later you ended your run. You traveled 554 meters vertically. You reached a peak speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Right. This is amazing. Yeah, so it even figured out to use the proper you know, format for units. Because you're because in Canada. I'm in Canada. It used uh, imperial units. <laughs> that was a green trail, the pony trail. So yeah, so it Three will keep kilometers, track. Three kilometers, 14 minutes, uh, that's fun. Yeah, it'll keep track of all your runs, all your information. Yeah. The nice thing is, is that you don't have to get out the map. You don't have to look, uh, you know, try to take your, go your gloves off all the time. Uh, it's got a couple other features. Uh, it's got a buddy finder mm. system where if you and a buddy have it, you can find out where each of you are very on the mountain. Very valuable. Uh, yeah. Which is very valuable. Um, I noticed it, it says connect your HUD to upload trip. So is there yeah. a USB connection Exactly. So it's got, a, it's got a micro USB connection behind a little water resistant got seal. It. So you'll plug that uh, into and your And then a power computer. button. So yeah, it also charges over micro USB. Um, one issue I did have is that the battery life in it isn't that great. So uh. I was leaving the screen on all the time. And with the screen on all the time, it's basically not going to make it through an absolutely full day of skiing. So if you, 
you can put the screen to sleep and have it still track everything. So if you were to put the screen to sleep a lot, it would probably make it through a day. But, you know, I wanted to have the stats up there of how fast I was going and all that kind of fun stuff. So it does that in real time as so you're skiing. It does that in real time as you're skiing. And it has a real time map that's just like the kind of navigation in your very car. That sounds dangerous. So it sounds can, very distracting. Let's right. It but it's way. great because, like, if you want to go down a run yeah. and, you know, figure out what other runs are off of that. Right. You know, you have it right You have there. a map. You have a map. Um, the other features that you have are you can pair it with your phone, you know, your iPhone or your Android phone, and control all of your music. So uh, <laughs> if you're, you know, listening to music through your phone, right. uh, you can see what's playing, skip to next tracks, pause, all that kind of stuff. And all uh, of that's on the wrist controller. All of that's on the wrist controller. You get uh, apps that you can load on to wow. do different analysis. Um, now, you pay for this separately from the goggles. So minus right. the goggles, how much is so, it? That's the major issue with this, is that it's $399 as an add-in to your goggles. Now, you can probably get some recon goggles for anywhere from $100 to $400. So, you know, this has the you know, capability of being a very expensive piece right, of kit, right. uh, particularly if you're, you know, a part-time skier. You know, if you, if you don't have a season pass to a resort, if you don't go and ski all the time or snowboard all the time, um, you know, this has some really cool features for snowboarders for keeping track of their jumps and how far they're going and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if you're not big into parks and you're not skiing, you know, at least 20 days in a season, maybe more, you know, it's kind of just an extra fun thing to have. But right. it's not really justifiable for a person that only skis, you know, a couple times a season. I'd imagine if, if you're a competitive racer, however, it'd be very useful for you. Right, because you could download those those runs right. um, and uh, it actually works so it works on all the ski resorts but it also works off resort it just doesn't have you know kind of those navigation features so so let's uh, get the pros and cons so the pros and cons are that it's easy to use on the mountain uh, you've got multiple goggle choices so you're not kind of locked in and you can you know move it to another pair of goggles if you break your goggles you're not out a whole ton of money um, but, you know, if you lose your goggles, you've probably also lost the MOD inside of it. Mm. Um, it's got the navigation and buddy finder, which are really unique features. Um, the cons are that it's, you know, rather expensive. At $399 as an add-in, um, you know, you really have to want it. You really, you know, if you have to convince a bunch of your friends to buy it, to use those buddy finders, you know, uh, you have to be doing pretty well and have a season pass or two to different resorts. So It's for the uh, hardcore it's, enthusiast. It's for the hardcore enthusiast. Yeah. Uh, battery life, you know, isn't really as long as I would want. In those kind of cold temperatures, batteries don't do very well. Mm. And it was, um, you know, negative three Celsius when I was skiing. And uh, it seemed to really affect the battery life with the screen on. Can you measure uh, Gs? Yeah, so you can measure some of that stuff. Uh -huh. um, now, one of, the, one of the cons really is is that if all you want to do is track stats, if all you want to do is kind of get a log of that, there's a lot of apps for your phone that already do that. So, you know, those apps are free to, you know, dollar or two. And, uh, you know, what you're really looking at is you want the control, you want the music control, the navigation, the maps. You want to have the display because you can already do this with your phone in terms of the stats. What, so, a, what an interesting you product. Know, yeah, so considering all of that, uh, I think I have to give it a try. Uh, if, you, if you know that you want this... Then Let's say price were not an object. It's a price does it not work an as it does? As every, it says, yes, okay. It does everything. You know, I. It, it's really, really great. People would ask me on the mountain, like, "Hey, what's that?" And they would be interested in it. They'd want to check it out. They liked it. So and it works. It works. It's, it's not it's a, a gimmick. It actually does gimmick. something useful. It does something useful okay. for the general the general consumer that might go to the mountain a couple of times. It's a try. I understand. Especially if you know they're well off. But it's a. If you want one of these, you know, you if you can afford four hundred bucks. Afford it, it's, it's a buy. worth the money. It's worth the saying. money, and okay. it does everything it says it does. Right. So I think that's a buy. I'm going to upgrade that to a buy, my friend. It's it's very very cool. So <laughs> let me ask you this: Do you want to yes. give it up? Uh, you you know, want to keep it? I was thinking about that. Like it would be it would be nice to keep it, but I wouldn't be really sad to see it go. You know, yeah. it's, it's well, you don't ski those, all the time. I don't either. ski all the time. Yeah. I only yeah. go a couple times a season. Right. It's not worth it for that problem. Yeah. Russell Tammany, thank you so thank much, you. and thank you for the great job you do keeping us afloat with Exponentia Systems. Highly recommended. Thanks to Snubs for putting this together. We had a jam-packed show. You notice I didn't even do a review. I will be back uh, on our next show. I'm going to do a review of the Philips Hue lights. I've got some other interesting stuff.
to take a look at. And if you want to see the full-length, unedited version of all our reviews, including the special four-hour edition of Alex Gumpel's review of the Windows phones, <laughs> man, it's an epic. Just go to youtube.com slash twit. That's where all of our... Uh, our, our reviews are uh, stored. And, of course, this show is always on every... Uh, it's Tuesday around 4 p.m. Pacific, sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later. That's 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300... Uh, actually, I should say 2400 UTC on uh, twit.tv. If you can't watch live, please watch After the Fact. You can download audio and video versions from twit.tv or subscribe, better yet, so you don't miss an episode on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks to all of our reviewers. Let's see if I can do this. Dick D. Bartolo, Shannon Morse, Brian Burnett, Alex Gumpel, and the redoubtable Russell Tammany. Did I leave anybody out? I got them all. Thanks to you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Remember, you have to watch before you buy. Bye-bye. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Boom, boom. Delicious things to eat. <laughs> the popcorn can't be beat. <laughs> Good job, everybody.